Factor 11 Inhibitors What should clinicians know for over half a century? Unfractionated heparin and vitamin K antagonists were the only anticoagulants available for clinical use. The first major advance was the introduction of alternatives to unfractionated heparin including low molecular weight heparin, fondaparinux, and intravenous direct thrombin inhibitors over the past two decades. Direct oral anticoagulants which target thrombin or coagulation factor 10 have been introduced as alternatives to vitamin K antagonists despite these advances. There are important limitations with existing agents, particularly for patients who require long-term oral anticoagulation. Limitations of current anticoagulant agents heparins including unfractionated heparin, low molecular weight heparin such as enoxaparin and deltaparin and fondaparinox are effective anticoagulants but require parenteral administration, are associated with substantial risks of bleeding, and are not suitable for long-term use warfarin and other unfractionated heparin are inconvenient because of the need for routine INR monitoring and dose adjustment and are associated with a high risk of bleeding direct oral anticoagulants overcome many of the limitations of warfarin because they can be given in fixed doses without monitoring and are associated with less bleeding however. Direct oral anticoagulants are less effective than unfractionated heparin in patients with mechanical heart valves, antiphospholipid antibody syndrome or rheumatic atrial fibrillation, have not been rigorously evaluated in patients with advanced kidney or liver disease. Direct oral anticoagulants are still associated with a substantial increase in the risk of major bleeding, especially from the gastrointestinal tract. Coagulation Factor 11 Factor 11 is part of the contact pathway of coagulation factor 11 deficiency may prolong the activated partial thromboplastin time APTT with no significant effect on prothrombin time PT or INR the bleeding diathesis of patients with congenital factor 11 deficiency also known as hemophilia C or Rosenthal disorder is variable and generally milder compared to other factor deficiencies such as hemophilia A or B patients with factor 11 deficiency have a lower rate of venous thrombo thromboembolism and cardiovascular events the inevitable dilemma in patients with indications for anticoagulation has been balancing the risk of bleeding with the risk of thrombotic events this calculation is further compounded as many risk factors including age hypertension and renal disease elevate risk for both bleeding and thrombosis the ideal anticoagulant agent would be one which effectively inhibits pathological thrombosis with minimal impairment of physiological hemostasis Factor 11 has emerged as an intriguing target in recent years, as it is thought to play a prominent role in atherothrombosis and may play an outsized role in thrombosis formation and growth via amplification of thrombin activation through the contact pathways. Some have suggested that factor 11 may play a disproportionately greater role in pathological thrombosis as opposed to hemostasis which would theoretically make factor 11 a particularly effective target for inhibition due to potential for effective prevention for thrombosis with reduced bleeding. Factor 11 inhibitors There are several types of 11 inhibitors which have been evaluated in preclinical studies and preliminary clinical trials. Of these small molecule inhibitors, antisense oligonucleotides and monoclonal antibodies. Malevexian and Asundexian are each potent and reversible active site inhibitors of 11 with low renal clearance, and half-lives of approximately 12H and 17H, respectively, suitable for once to twice daily dosing. In summary, dose finding phase 2 trials, evaluating Milvexian and Asundexian, provided proof of concept, showing that these medications were well-tolerated medication in across several indications and were associated with low rates of bleeding, but were not powered to show efficacy results. Thank you.